Um, so how do we protect the brain or what are the uh, mechanisms have our, is our brain involved to be able to maintain a constant homeostasis? Well, there's physical protection from obviously your, your skull having that very unique spongy uh, tissue in between the two uh, hard bones, if you could call them that. The meninges, which is a just a protective membrane, which if you take an anatomy and physiology or even general biology, I think you understand that everything is membranes upon membranes. And then the cerebrospinal fluid, um, and then the ventricles, which pump them and move them around and have them circulating. This serves both as a physical protection, but also, in my opinion, as a chemical protection or as a chemical mediator. It, it's very much analogous to plasma. So let's just say this is here. Um, this is similar to the plasma of your blood, except that it has a cushioning effect. The blood-brain barrier, um, what this is, is at the blood vessel endothelia, tight junctions are going to form, and this is going to keep it very, very isolated from the rest of the body. And so many of the compounds or molecules that are being produced in your body, many of the cells of your body, don't get into the brain. A very specific types of cells and very specific types of compounds can get across that blood-brain barrier. But for the most part, those tight junctions do a very good job of preventing anything from going in or out. So for the meninges, there's three, uh, I guess, layers of it. There's the dura mater, arachnoid mater, and then pia mater. DAP for short, if you want to remember it. So dura mater is this tough exterior layer made of fibrous connective tissue. It's, it literally translates to tough mother. Uh, and that's pretty much all its job is, is to um, protect, is, is predominantly as a protective surface. Um, it's the closest one connected to the bone, and it's the furthest one connected to the actual uh, nervous tissue. The arachnoid matter, on the other hand, is this fine, elastic arachnoid, so web-like covering. Um, and then in the subarachnoid space, we can see the cerebrospinal fluid and the larger, one of the largest blood vessels that run through the brain. And because of this, it's, they're, they're poorly protected. So it's, um, certain blood vessels in the body, or in the brain, sorry, are more prone to having aneurysms and things like that than others. And then the arachnoid villi, which actually protrude through the dura mater, are going to absorb uh, central sp uh, cerebral spinal fluid into the venous blood. And then lastly, you have the pia mater at the closest part to the actual nervous tissue, and this is a very delicate connective tissue that wraps the brain, and there's really not much more that I could say about pia mater. Kind of an interesting, interesting uh, mystery there. One of the things that I love about um, learning about the brain and learning about the nervous system is we're going to start using the words may a lot, so I get that same kind of kick that I get out of it from studying uh, immunology. But anyways, here's a picture showing the dura mater being in the outermost layer, the arachnoid, um, minix, mater, whatever, the, that's the, what's in the name. And then here we have right underneath that with the pia mater right between uh, right at the cortex, right at the nervous tissue as both a protection from both um, physical and then chemical processes as well. It's very much analogous to um, blood plasma. It's brought about pretty much by the same process. It's just that it's a little bit more specific. It's not exactly the same, it's similar. Um, there are probably a lot less proteins uh, in cerebrospinal fluid than what you would probably see in plasma. Um, nevertheless, though, it, it also serves as a liquid cushion, so it protects against physical uh, trauma as well. And literally, the brain would, would crush itself, or it would, you know, clamp off and, and, and reduce uh, blood supply if it didn't have this. So this is very important stuff. And what's interesting to me as well is that whereas plasma is something that's in the blood, but you can't locate that, if you have someone with a head injury, you know, say they're bleeding out their nose, or they're bleeding out their ears, the, the cerebrospinal fluid has such a specific density that when you put some gauze up to try to cover up the, the bleeding and you pull it away, you'll see this golden halo-like ring around it. And that shows that, yes, this person has had some pretty severe uh, brain damage because there's CSF leaking into the blood out of the orifices in this context. But there's located in three places. The subarachnoid space, which we just talked about there. Um, this thing called the central canal and then the cerebral ventricles of the brain and it all drains into the jugular vein. You can see the ventricles here um, kind of located in the center of the brain and then there's also this picture here. Um, lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, this is very important clinically, cerebral aqueduct. Um, sometimes if someone has, for example, like a, a tumor or something, because it's such a narrow uh, point that if that gets blocked up, you can have swelling in the brain, hydrocephalus. It can become very uh, a problem very 